This is Joey Regal with Biblical Prophecies. Hello, Joe. Good to see you again. I would say that I'm glad my first response didn't scare you away, but who am I kidding? You didn't see it. I'm happy to see, however, that out of the 1,000 views that you did get on your first video, thanks to Bible Flockbox, only 68 people have found your content and commentary enlightening, and one of those is me. I did leave a link to my first response video in the comments of this video just to be sure that you saw it, and since you've since responded to other people's comments, I know you have, I hope you at least got something out of it. Either way, today as I understand it, we're going to be learning about why all of my classes felt so empty on April 20th, so let's jump in. I'd like to make a couple announcements before starting this video. I understand that I've been getting a lot of comments of how terrible my video quality is, and you know what? I honestly agree with you guys. Honestly, it's really not that bad. Not for a beginner, at least. Especially one who records their face from their very start of their time on YouTube. The main reason I don't is simply because with my current living situation, it would simply take too much effort. Either way, I do have some suggestions. I noticed in this video that you have fixed your audio transitions, so I'm hoping you got that from my comment. But next, I would try to stand a bit further back from the camera. If the audience can see more of your shoulders and chest, you would look a lot more appealing and approachable than what looks like a floating head for the most part right now. Otherwise, keep it up and you will naturally improve. But I found this new program called OBS Studio that I plan on using. I haven't figured out how it works yet, but my next video revelation, chapter 12 explanation, I plan on using OBS Studio for that. I look forward to it. Now, if you use marijuana for medical purposes, please keep following the instructions of your doctor. Oh shit, you're right. I mean, I'm glad you let me know that up front. I was totally ready to dispose of all my legally prescribed medical marijuana simply based on whatever you have to say in this video. But I guess if you really think I should take my doctor's word, I'll continue doing so. In this video, I'm talking about the people who use marijuana for recreational purposes. Anyway, I present to you shocking marijuana use statistics. Cool. Let's hear them. I found this link online that said 52% of Americans over the age of 18 have tried marijuana at some point in their lives, and out of those 52% of Americans, 44% of them still use it today. I'd like to interject here for a moment and make a few notes. First of all, we may as well establish the numbers that we're going to be working with. With the most recent numbers I can find, there are about 250 million people in the United States right now over the age of 18, so that's the number of adult Americans that we'll be using in our calculations. As we go forward, I'd like to make sure we keep in mind that the article that you're citing does not appear to take into account the percentage of those people surveyed that only use medical marijuana, nor does the article seem to even remotely be concerned by these statistics, especially considering how shocking you seem to think it is. And those are only the people who admitted it. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can read it for yourself. And not just that, 65% of those marijuana users are parents, and marijuana users are more likely to be parents by 51%. I'm going to go ahead and stop you here because you appear to have misread your statistics. First of all, you say here that 65% of marijuana users are parents, however you fail to mention which of the two categories that is a statistic for, and as you just finished talking about people who still use marijuana to this day, that is what people are going to assume you're talking about. However, the actual statistic is that 65% of people surveyed who had ever tried marijuana even once are parents today. You also say here that marijuana users are more likely to be parents by 51%. However, if you read the article more closely, you'll see that marijuana smokers are not, as you say, 51% more likely to be parents, but rather 51% of those surveyed who said that they still smoke marijuana happen to be parents. This means that the people surveyed here were 1% more likely to be a parent if they currently use marijuana. When you pair this with the fact that about 53% of adults ages 18 to 44 are parents in America, you end up with a statistic showing that parents are actually about 2% less likely to be current marijuana users than non-parents. Thorough reading is important, bud. That means if you were to pick 100 parents at random, 51 out of those 100 parents do marijuana. No, Joe, that's simply not the case, and I really hope that this is a legitimate mistake on your part and not an intentional misdirection to your audience. What those statistics actually show is that if you picked 100 random people off the street, 52 of them would likely have tried marijuana at least once. 
44 of them likely still use it today, and out of those 44, only 22 will likely happen to be parents. And if you were to, as you say, pull 100 random parents off the street, 52 of them will have likely tried marijuana at least once, and about 44 of them will likely still use it today. Generally, if a statistic sounds too good to be true and proving your point, it is, and you've just misunderstood it. This is just sad because parents are supposed to be raising their children on how to get into heaven, not doing drugs that affect their bodies in bad ways and giving that example to their children. And this will cause more people to do marijuana because if their parents are doing marijuana, their children will as well. And that will cause more people to do it. I have absolutely no idea where you pulled that statistic from. As it's not in the article that you provided, my best guess is that you pulled it straight out of your ass to fit your own presuppositions. In my experience, on the contrary, it's been the children with the strictest parents that were the more likely to use marijuana, other than the children of parents who were unopposed to it. Now, since math is my favorite subject in school and I'm currently studying pre-calculus in high school, I'm going to be doing some math for you to make the statistics easier. For you and you understand what I'm saying as I get into this video I promise suffice it to say that as I now know that you can't be reliably trusted to accurately relay the relevant statistics in an article to me you should understand why I will also be doing this math alongside you so first we're gonna do the easiest statistic so we know that 52% of people over the age of 18 do weed so I'm gonna write this down so the best way to show this is that 52 out of 100 do weed. So the best way to simplify this fraction, in fact the only way, is to find the biggest num divisible number that goes into both the numerator and the denominator, which in this case is 4. So we're going to divide both numbers by 4. So 52 divided by 4. And that gives you 13 and 25. So what this basically means is if you were to pick 25 random people that were over the age of 18, 13 of those people would have tried weed at least once. So assuming that the study you found is unbiased and its results can be reliably extrapolated out to the rest of the country, that means that out of the 250 million adults in America, 130 million, or 52% of them, have smoked weed at some point in their life. That's just sad, in my opinion. 44% of people who have tried marijuana still use it to this day. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. 44 out of 100. Thankfully, the biggest number that divides into both numbers is 4 once again. Isn't that convenient? So divide by 4 and 4. This gets you 11 over 25. So out of 25, if you, sorry, if you were to pick 25 people who have done marijuana at least once and are at least 18 years old, 11 of those people still use marijuana frequently, or whatever you want to call it. This is where it gets a little complicated. It can probably be assumed that the percentage of people over the age of 65 who still smoke marijuana is much lower than the percentage of people below the age of 65 who still smoke marijuana, which skews the numbers in a way that you don't account for throughout your calculations later in this video. As senior citizens make up about 20.7% of the entire adult population of the United States, in order for your calculations of actual numbers to be correct for your next statistic, you'll need to account for this distinction going forward. We'll go ahead and subtract 75% of these senior citizens in assuming that most of them do not likely still use marijuana regularly. Now you can account for this in one of two possible ways. Your first option would be to remove that percentage from the adult population before the next calculation is made, bringing your starting number of potential current marijuana users down to somewhere around 120 million from its original 130 million. Or your second option would be to deduct the around 15% after your calculation. For the sake of transparency, we'll go ahead and do both. If we deduct the seniors before the calculation, you end up with 44% of about 120 million, which comes to somewhere around 52.8 million adults who still use marijuana today. If you deduct the seniors after, you take 44% of 130 million and get about 57.2 million, and then when you remove about 15% of that, it gives you about 48.6 million current marijuana users in the United States today. Which of these two methods you use depends on the general age of the people who were surveyed and how many you believe should be accounted for as senior marijuana users. But either way, the difference in values is rather large at around 4 million people, making it difficult to get a real, accurate statistic. And these statistics just get scarier and scarier. 65%, so... 65% 
of weed smokers or anyone who does weed. So if you're vaping, whatever. Are parents. Let's be specific here. Again, it's not 65% of the people who still use marijuana today that are parents, but that 65% of the people who have ever tried marijuana even once are parents. Continue. So just think about that. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. I can't really do this anymore because it's just getting sadder. The biggest divisible number is five from the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to divide both sides. This gets you 13 out of 20. So for every 20 weed smokers or vapors, whatever, 13 of those smokers or anyone who does weed are parents. Yes, 65% of those surveyed who had tried marijuana at some point were parents. However, only 51% of those parents still use marijuana today. You gotta be specific or it seems like you're trying to mislead people. Just think about that. So that means more children are gonna do weed because their parents did it and they're gonna think it's okay. Once again, pulling that statistic right out of your ass. Just think about that for a little bit. I think the reason people are doing marijuana and other drugs is because they don't have God. And yet another baseless assumption. And this one not only is not supported by your data, but is directly contradicted by it. In the United States, about 62% of people identify as members of a church. This is a full 14% higher than the percentage of American adults, based on your survey, who have never smoked marijuana. Where is your justification for bringing God into this discussion other than the fact that your channel is called Biblical Prophecies and you feel obligated to mention the Bible at some point? And keep in mind, these statistics are only from the people who admitted it. I think the numbers are a lot higher than this. Which only hurts your most recent assumption even more. Because most people don't want to admit they use drugs. Now a lot of adults and teens say that using marijuana frees their minds. But the Bible says otherwise. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 37 states, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty means freedom. So when you put your mind into God, your mind is more free. Even if your Bible had any merit whatsoever, its statement that God can free your mind does not necessarily mean that God is the only thing that can free one's mind. If you are a marijuana or any drug user and want to stop, you can confess your sins to God and he will forgive you. Don't take my word for it, take the Bible's word. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 states, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's supposed willingness to forgive people's sins does not make it any easier for a drug addict to stop using drugs. Thank you for watching this video, also known as the last video on biblical prophecies Oh, well shit, that was a short-lived YouTube career. Made with iMovie. Oh, got it. Cool. I'm always down for a higher quality video to debunk. Keep it up, but next time, try to at least keep your statistics straight. Anyway, that's it for his portion of this video, so let's quickly recap what he's so afraid of. Just for the sake of argument, let's assume that this study that he's using can be accurately extrapolated to the rest of the United States without error. So there are 250 million adults in the United States. Out of those 250 million, 52% or about 130 million have used marijuana at least once in their lifetime. As for people who still use marijuana actively today, that number is much lower, likely somewhere between 48 and 53 million people. This means that out of the entire adult population of the United States, the total percentage of people who still use marijuana regularly is somewhere between 19 and 21 percent. So about 20 percent of American adults use marijuana today. Does that sound high to you? Or maybe low? Either way, let's think about it. If you think it's low, this is probably simply based on the horrified way that our friend at Biblical Prophecies read out the statistics, making it seem like a much higher percentage than it actually is. If it doesn't seem like that large of a percentage to you, then what is there to be worried about? If it seems like a massive group of people to you, however, you're left with yet another problem to consider. If you're so freaked out over the idea of people using marijuana and you think it's absolutely horrifying that one in five American adults use it today, I'd like you to look around. Is the sky falling? Are people everywhere dropping dead from marijuana overdose? Do you get served on a frequent basis by people at restaurants and other establishments that are noticeably under the influence? I'm going to assume you answered no to all of these questions, as most people are able to do, in which case I have to ask you, what's so bad about marijuana? If one in five American adults can function in society perfectly well while using marijuana on occasion or even frequently, then what are you so afraid of? 
Anyway, that's all for me in this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for future content if you haven't already. The next two months of the God Is Not Good merch store charity is going to be supporting the Human Rights Campaign, featuring some new designs themed around Pride Month being released very soon. If you'd like to support this amazing charity and the beautiful people it helps to protect, order a shirt soon to make sure you receive it before any potential Pride Month festivities. Either way, thank you all very much for watching, and as always, have a blessed day, fellow heathens.